cyan dye. The cyan is a graft, and this is, this is a scar. This goes directly to the roots. And the reason we graft all the trees is that if you plant a tree from a pit, an avocado, an apple, a pear, an avocado, I just came from uh, uh, Mar Vista Gardens, a very nice low-income housing project, over 60 acres, and they, the, the, the people there are very good farmers, but there's some of the basics that they don't really understand. So they have lovely avocado trees that are seven, eight, nine years old that have no avocados. Well, an avocado won't have avocados till about 12, 15 years, maybe 25 years. Wow. And so those trees have to be grafted, but they're big, and okay? so they have to be grafted. So the same thing occurs with apples, with pears, with peaches. If you plant a pit, my grandmother used to plant them. She had loads and loads of trees, but I never saw any fruit. The tree will grow, but the tree is immature. It has to reach maturity, which is different for each variety, before it will set fruit. It's just like anything else in nature. Animals, tigers, people. They've got to be mature before they can reproduce or produce fruit. So what do we do for an orchard? Mm -hmm. Well, we plant rootstock, okay. which is a compatible tree to the apple. It's a kind of an apple uh, that's been hybridized to do well in our soil, in clay soil, and to be resistant to uh, woolly apple aphid. That's what you have. We have woolly apple aphid. That's who we have in this climate. But none of the northern climates have that because the aphid lives in the roots and oh. where it gets really cold and freezes, they die. So they never live more than one generation. But here, if you get woolly apple aphids and the soil is warm, they can continue to proliferate in the, in the rootstock. Uh, so most of, this, most of the rootstock that's made for Southern California or warm climates is resistant to the woolly apple aphid. So that's the advantage of having two trees. One part is resistant to the diseases that are common for roots in this area. The other thing that's really interesting is that the graft is taken from a mature tree. So basically, when I put the little graft in here, this is one, one year old, my trees are probably much, much bigger. They'll have fruit in one year because they're ready, they're older. So all the fruit trees mm. in the orchards are grafted with a mature twig. You know, it could only be one, one bud. A single bud has all the genetic information to do everything that the tree does. Everything. That's the miracle of, of, the, of the, uh, the genome, is I can take this bud and put it into a piece of rootstock. Within about three weeks, it'll blossom out. Within a year, I'll have a, a tree about this size. And by the following year, it'll be filled with apples. So. This is a peach. It's also grafted. Anything that grows below the graft is a sucker, or a, um, in Spanish you call them vastigos, or a, uh, it, it's, it's coming from the rootstock, and since it comes directly off the root, it will grow much more vigorously if you let it, let it go than the tree, the scion, and that sucker can take over the tree. It happens very common in citrus. And it also happens with roses, if you have roses. These are all members of the rosa family. So a lot of the same things that pertain to roses pertain to these trees. They're from the same family. I saw there's a, 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 a school up here in Topanga. It's one big place. It's a thousand acres. It's called uh, Saddleback Ranch. So I went to prune their, their trees for the, for the house, but they have a huge orchard. Uh, for vi a vineyard and avocados, but they had a <coughs> mixed orchard that their gardeners didn't know how to take care of. But the other one is a camp called um, camp. the Shalom Camp, I think it was. The guy who went there was the guy who founded Tree People. At any rate, I saw the apple orchard, uh, the, uh, the citrus orchard, uh, looked really <coughs> beautiful, but most of it was rootstock. And I didn't have the heart to tell the man manager that he was so proud of it that you're never going to get any fruit in this. You've got to cut them all down. Uh, so even in, they look great, uh, but you've got to be very, very careful. Uh, it happens in citrus because a lot of the rootstock puts up these, these uh, suckers very, very aggressively. All right. So the apple is an apically dominant tree. So when I got this thing, I, I cut it, and uh, then I cut it again. And what you want with an apple tree is uh, a central leader. So 
Yeah. It has a central leader and then it has tiers. Usually three of these, with the, with, the, with the limbs going out like the spokes of a wheel. That's the way it grows best. And you keep cutting it down and letting a new one go up and new branches come out. Maybe you three tiers would be leader? good. You cut the central leader down? Well, when you get the tree, the first thing you do is you cut it knee high. Every single tree you cut knee high. Hmm. And that's probably the worst problem. People, I, I pay for the whole thing, you know. <laughs> bought it. The problem is to know about mm -hmm. why, why do the professional nurserymen, they get, many of them have trees that are grown on spec. They, they know exactly what they want. So the nursery keeps them and grows them depending on what kind of equipment the farmer's going to use. But when they plant their own trees, they get, they get the same tree you do. That's why they're all grown that way. They get them from Wilson or... or North American trees or wherever, and it's a big tree because it's been grown in a field in a line, and people get it and they it's a great tree. What they what the professional growers do they cut it down to knee height, they cut everything off. Wow. And the reason is that they can get the tree to grow into its normal configuration to bear fruit in one season, whereas you, you can't do that. You, your fruit's going to be way up here and there's going to be branches all over. And the reason is these, these buds are called, these end buds, this is when, when they go dormant, they form a bud, bud here rather than a leaf. Those buds have all the information for next year's growth. And if you cut it and look at it under the microscope, you see all these little layers. And they are the nodes, these, these nodes. And what will happen is there's maybe 12, and it'll grow 12 nodes. And then it stops, and it'll form another bud for the following year. But in underneath... The bark is uh, a different kind of bud. It's called an epicormic bud. And that bud is not controlled. It's not preformed. As long as the weather's warm, it'll keep growing. So it'll grow three feet, six feet. You can grow the whole tree in one season by pruning it appropriately. So I let these grow. Then I, I pruned it. Another uh, leader came up. I pruned it. These buds grew out. And now I have almost a complete tree. It's ready to bear fruit. So the apple you grow with a single central leader and then multiple scaffold branches. Now the other thing is, uh, these, these had weights, but they came off in the car driving all, over, all the way around this windy road. Uh, I've forgotten how windy it was. Uh, but I have weights on these, and I'll, I'll show you what they look like. I, may, I think I have some down. Oh, here's one. All up and down the coast in the Central Valley, in the Pajaro Valley where there's lots of apple trees, they use these weights. They just pour some cement in these pony packs, you know, which you get your little plants in and put a wire in it. And then these, these were all on these branches. That's how I got them down. Yeah. Because if I didn't, mm. this tree would all growing up like this, columnar. Hmm. That's the way these trees grow. And when they grow like that, you're not going to get much fruit. They grow that way because these come from a forest of apple trees. And the trees that survive are the ones that can get up into the sunlight. And so what happens is they grow in this columnar fashion until, until they choke out some of the trees around them. But they don't have very much in the way of fruit. So what you have to do is, because you're transplanting this into a controlled situation, an orchard, you want to get the tree in the configuration that produces fruit. So basically, when, when the limbs are up like that, it means that they're not getting enough light, and the tree, through its hormones, tells the tree to keep growing, keep going, keep going. And they grow these long, that's what suckers are too, they grow up. They just keep getting up because the tree is not getting enough light in its interior. Now, since I bent these down, I'm starting to get fruit buds. The fruit buds mostly form when the, when the branch is horizontal or the ideal is about 60 degrees. So that's what I try to do. They get these at 60 degrees. You go into an apple orchard and you'll see that the branches are all, sometimes they're tied down to the base. If you don't, each one of these will grow a shoot. It's not going to grow fruit yet. But now, this is a fruit bud. This is a, this is a fruit bud. All these are fruit buds. They, they, look, they look a little scaly because they, they're pointed and they usually have five leaves, just like the five blossoms they can have. That's a fruit bud, that's a fruit bud. So by this summer, th these will blossom out, summer, and there'll be apples there, five apples. And they'll be thinned down to one or two. So 
cool. So that's the configuration of the apple tree. That's what you're aiming at. And the reason it's important to keep that in mind is because when you're pruning, if you have in mind what the tree should look like, then it's a lot easier to see that this branch is crossing over that one, that's just not right, I'll cut that off, or this one's hanging down, I'll cut that off. So when you have a, in your mind's eye a picture of how the tree should look, ideally, then the pruning becomes a lot easier. And we'll, we'll go into the little orchard and you'll see other problems that you prune out. So this, is, this was a rootstock, it grew like a regular tree. It was cut off, and I grafted a lot of these. This one I, I, I bought because my grafts are all growing. And a little bud was put right in there, in the field. So a bud was put in last year, and it started to grow, and they cut off the rootstock. And once you cut it, I pruned this maybe six weeks ago. <laughs> so I pruned this off. I don't want it to go any higher. Now it'll put out another group of these scaffold So you're suppressing the height, essentially. You're just making it go Is it like out. a bonsai apple tree? Well, no, it won't suppress the height. This will grow up. This will keep growing. Uh, what you're trying to do is get a, a special configuration, a central leader. You do want to keep the height about eight feet, but it's very hard to suppress the height of a tree by, by pruning it because the more you prune it, the more aggressive it gets, unless you understand what it's, what it's going to do. Basically, when I cut this off, it, it removes a hormone that's in the tips of all these branches. It's called auxin. It's the hormone that grows in all these, that is formed in all these trees that are apically dominant. These are trees that grow in a forest and try and get up into the sky. Once you cut that tip off, even if I just pinch it off, it opens up all these buds. Now these buds are called paradormant because it's not winter, but they're not growing. But they're dormant and they're alive. And the only reason they're not growing is because this hormone is suppressing them. Because it thinks the tree is too small, you know, it thinks it's in Kazakhstan, it's got to get up to get some sunlight. So it'll keep growing. And it, when you first, first start these trees, you keep pinching off the end and let these, all these side branches form a little uh, apple um, fruiting spurs. So basically, that's what I did here. I cut this off and immediately these came out and a new one started going up again because it's an apically dominant tree and it tries to get up. Okay. All right, I think you got the idea of that's what it looks like, that's why you do it. You can weight these down, you can tie them down. Uh, when they're young, you can use toothpicks just to keep the branches mm -hmm. down and get them to grow at about a 60 degree angle. And within one season, you'll have all these fruiting buds. And as soon as the apples form, it'll keep the, the limbs down. Once they get into a shape, they'll stay that way. The toothpick won't damage the little branch or anything? No. no. Uh, the, the, the whole, just like a pruning cut, it, it seals within, uh, yeah, it grows right around it. You, know, mm. you can make all kinds of cuts and move it. And I actually, once you move the branches into a shape, within a few months, they'll stay that way forever. Uh, they don't snap back. The, the, the wood is reformed to keep it in that position. Herb, do you want to do that with all of the trees, like the this plum is apple. trees? Apples like, and pears. But uh, we had wires on our plum trees, branches, to yeah. keep them down. Well, well, we'll talk about the, we'll talk we'll talk about the the, the uh, stone fruit trees now. But okay. Is there any other question about yeah. the apples? And we're going to see them, and we're going to we're going to go over this again. But I want you to get this general idea of the two that there are two trees. That the tree has a characteristic growing shape. If you maintain the growing shape that the tree is used to, the tree is going to be healthiest uh, and it's also going to bear the most fruit. So I've heard that to maintain the size, you said you wanted about eight feet, but you said also when you're pruning it stimulates growth, so how do you keep it at eight feet? Well, basically what you do, when, you, when this reaches the top, most of the trees, most of the apple trees won't grow bigger than that. They have a huge apple tree here, it's probably the biggest one I've seen, but most of them growing in, in this climate stay fairly reasonably um, small. But what you can do is you can prune to a, a, a uh, branch down to the, and the branch will grow out and that will suppress it for quite some time. Or you can bend over the top. And when you bend it over, it may form a few little uh, suckers coming off the top, water sprouts rather, uh, but you can prune those very easily. So basically, either pruning it to a branch, if I pruned it here, it's going to take a long time to grow any higher. So I would wait till I have a branch like that up here and then prune on top of it. 
and then it'll probably stay that way for quite some time. What's the best season to prune? Like, should I prune my tree now or wait till summer, spring? Well, when you prune it, depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Most trees here should be pruned, should have summer pruning and winter pruning. And as soon as they lose their leaves or after cropping, the winter is the best time because the tree has shed most of its leaves and you can see the outline of it very well. But there is a, a reason to do summer pruning too. The, differ the difference is, if I prune this in the winter, when all the leaves are, are off, the tree, what's happening now is the tree is, these leaves are drying up. They're drying up because the tree senses, because of the daylight variation, that it's coming into fall and winter. And so what it does is it begins to suck back all of the fluid, the carbohydrates, all of the nutrients that are in the leaves. And, uh, and then it puts it into the root, and so the roots are swelling now in all the trees around, much more in the northern climates of here, but here too. All of the nutrients are coming down, and, and the uh, chlorophyll will be broken down, and that will be sucked back too. And that's why they'll change color, because uh, the tree has not only chlorophyll, but it has uh, acrocyanine, it has a yellow, and it has a red pigment that are sensitive to different uh, wavelengths of light. So basically, the chlorophyll is the, is the most and the darkest, but once that's sucked back, you see the other colors underneath. It's not that the leaf is changing color, you're just seeing what's underneath the main photo pigment, which is the chlorophyll. So basically, the tree is sucking back all this stuff and storing it in the trunk and root. So if I cut off this branch in winter, its nutrients have already been, been stored. So in the spring, it's got more nutrient than then it has branches. And so it, it's going to grow more vigorously. If I prune it in the summer before the tree has had an opportunity to store all this, the tree is not going to have as, as much nutrient stored for the branches that are still there. So summer pruning tends to suppress the tree. And size control is done by summer pruning because you're pruning away branches that the tree has already expended a lot of energy to make and probably can't catch up during the remaining part of the season. So if you prune in the summer, like in August or after cropping, that's going to suppress the tree and, and keep it smaller. Uh, so that's the difference between those two mm. times. But you can prune almost any time of year, but it, it'll cause different things. My fear is that I'm going to kill my trees if I keep pruning and uh, I keep thinking that. Like it's going to die. Like it's like my arm being cut off. <laughs> I'm going to die eventually when everything's well, gone. Well, the reason we prune these trees, these trees grow in an area, what they're, they're, they're grown in an area that's much more hostile than an orchard. So basically, these trees grow many, many more branches than they need because where it grows in nature, there, there's snow that falls on them, they, they break, wind breaks the branches, there are animals that come, browsing uh, deer, uh, bear, uh, anything that, that eats the, the new shoots. So the tree makes, if it's going to survive and if it's lasted, it's going to make many more branches and shoots than it really needs to live or produce fruit. So when you put it in the orchard, you want to prune out all these extra branches because they're, they're, they're taking energy away from your fruit and they don't need it. The tree makes it because it doesn't know that it's now in a protected environment where there aren't going to be browsing elk and deer. But basically, the, the tree lives like it was taught to live in its genes. And when you put it in another environment, you're making a compact with the tree. I'm going to feed you and see that you get a lot of sun and see that you get water, but I don't want you growing any more branches. I, I want you to make fruit. <laughs> You know, in, in, nature, in, nature, in nature, the plum is going to be, or the apricot is going to be the size of a pit. Because that's what the tree is interested in, making pits. It's not interested in fruit. It only puts a little bit of fruit around it so some animal will come and take it and carry it off. So it doesn't compete with the mother tree. So basically, you're changing a number of the things about the tree to make it more useful to us. And, it, you know, it's a compact, very much like a farmer has with, it, with his animals. I'm going to provide you with the things you need, but you've got to provide me because we don't use the pits. We don't plant the pits to get a tree because the tree won't be true to type. And it's going to take many, many years before that tree grown from a pit is going to be mature enough to have fruit. So we, we, <laughs> we, we propagate these trees vegetatively. We take a bud or we take a stick and we put it in the ground and let it form roots. So those are, these are some basic things, but 
once you know that, you walk through the, the orchard, your orchard and the garden, things begin to make sense. It's a lot more fun. It's, it's and if you were to take a, a piece and stick it in the ground for it to grow, would that ha would you do that in the winter or spring? It, the winter when it's dormant, because uh, you, you don't want the tree if it doesn't have roots. You don't want it to be metabolizing and trying to live. You'd rather it was asleep and all the nutrients were stored in the branch. So that's the best time to try and plant these things. If you do it in the summer, when the thing is actively growing, it can't get water up because it doesn't have any roots yet. But if you put it in the winter, it will gradually develop some roots. Each one of these buds is, is kind of like a stem cell. It's, it's called a toady potential uh, bud. Meaning that if I take a branch and stick it in the ground, this fruiting bud may sprout roots. If I put it up like that, it's going to sprout another sprout because it thinks it's not getting enough light. If I get it down so sunlight hits the top, it's going to turn into a fruiting spur. And that happens usually in August and September. So now the trees are forming their fruiting buds. So I want you to take a look at this. This is what a, these are. So Sorry. you know what a fruiting bud looks like Maybe on, move on the it apple to the sun. Those are these things. It's okay. And apple okay. trees are pruned very uh, a little, and uh, because uh, because this fruiting spur will bear apples for maybe 10, 12 years. So I don't want to cut that. I don't want to have to grow another one. So you only prune out extra things on an apple tree. Whereas a peach is like a rose. Once this branch has peaches, it will never, in the history of this tree, from now until the next ice age, produce another peach. Oh, wow. It only does it once. And that's why you've got to prune these very heavily. So this, when you're pruning, you take out maybe 10% of the wood. In this, you take out 50% of the wood. Because you want new branches coming all the time. Like your roses, you prune them down. So here are, I want you to come and look at these. Uh, these are typical compound buds. You can't, you can't this is pruned to a trail. Let me start. I, I, I got mad at it. I got mad at it. I got mad at it. I got mad at This tree was pruned first here, and a bud was put here. Oh boy, this looks like a. No, that's good. It's coming out of the. Oh, yeah, that's coming from the. Top. Anyway, this, um, this tree's ready to drop its leaves, this peach. I think it's a red baron or something like that. Anyway. Right, uh, it was pruned very early on, way down, you know, I left a couple inches, and all of a sudden these things sprouted out. When it was at Home Depot, it was that big, all scraggly, branches all together, some broken, poor little things sitting off in the corner. So I put it in the thick pot, and I pruned it down here, and these, all these branches came out. Sorry, how long ago did you do that? This was last February, uh, March. It was last March, yeah, this was last year's tree. So what I did, then I, I began, as this, shoot grew, I pinched the end out. As soon as I pinched the end out, I freed these buds from the suppressing effect of the auxin, the hormone. And these paradormant buds bloomed out. And that's how I got all of these laterals, because that's where the peaches form. Not, they don't form on the trunk, or for the most part, on these big branches. They form on the laterals. So you keep pruning it back to get more of these buds coming out from under the bark. Okay, so this, this, that's the way you prune uh, plums, peaches, nectarines, all the stone fruit. You want it to be an open septum, like a vase. And if you fly over uh, a peach orchard, it looks like a bunch of green donuts, <laughs> all touching each other, but the center is open. And they have a canopy around it, just like a donut. And um, that's what you want to do, because you want the sunlight to come in here and hit these. Because like I said, these are all these buds are toady potential. If this was shaded during August and September, these buds would form shooting buds or vegetative buds because they're dark and the tree needs it needs more light. But if they're exposed and sunlight hits them, hits these branches, the tree knows then it can make seeds or fruit. And since I'm keeping it pruned and not letting it grow too many vegetative buds, it's going to put a lot of its energy into the fruit and grow big peaches rather than little tiny things uh, that are wood in nature. So so next year after the one of, say this lateral limb right there grows a, some fruit, would you remove it? Yes. So what you do is you take out every, you grow the shoot one year and you have 
you grow the shoot one year and you have the fruit on it the next year. So what I, what I do is every other shoot, this is the standard way to prune plums and uh, peaches and nectarines. Plums are a little different, but you prune it down to one or two buds. You want to keep pruning it down or else what happens is the fruiting wood gets further and further away. If I didn't prune it, all right, these aren't going to aren't going to have fruit next year, but the tree will begin to put out some new shoots. But they're getting further and further away, and the fruit is going to be poor in quality because it's further from the source mm. of nutrient. If you can keep the tree compact like this, the fruit's going to be bigger, it's going to be sweeter, and it's going to ripen better. So basically, you want to take out about 50% of the wood. And on the little book, though, I have a little thing that we give to our pruning teams and the master gardeners and it, it describes how to go about how to organize your thinking when you're coming into the orchard to prune it tells you what to do and then it has a little diagram that i call my pruning scale it tells you how much wood should be removed from the different kinds of trees and then i'm explaining to you why but you don't you just have to know that that this needs to be pruned hard but if you know why you're in a lot better shape so these are our compound buds i want you to take a look at them there's a a flower bud in the center, which is a thick bud, and it's got two shoot buds on either side of it. Oh. So come in and look at these. This is a typical of the stone fruit. They're compound buds, and the apricots are very similar. So basically, this will have a flower and two little shoots. And so when I, when I, well, when I prune this back after it's cropped, those shoots will form more of these little branches. The, these more of these laterals. These are called the scaffold of the limbs. And basically, in the peach tree, you should have three, no more than three, four maybe. But some of these trees, you'll see, and, and uh, Pam's trees too, you, you have five or ten of these. And so you're dividing up the energy of the tree into so many branches that the fruit's going to be real small. Uh, you'd rather have good solid fruit because the fruit to pit ratio is what you're interested in. You know, a lot of People I talk to say, well, yeah, but we get a lot more fruit. I said, yeah, but if you, if you weigh the fruit, and the, the seeds are going to be the same no matter what. you got a lot of them, but there's not much fruit on each one of them. You'd rather have some really good fruit. They're much more nutritious, and they're better. They're better tasting. Uh, so that's these uh, stone fruit. The plum is similar to this, but a plum can put uh, two or three years worth of fruit on the same branch. But... Um, so this is always kept cut off. And so that makes for a really low peach. That should be eight feet roughly. How, this is like one and a half foot. Yeah, the, the peach's branches should start down here. You don't want them starting up at your waist. Oh. Because then you, you're going to have to use a ladder to get the fruit. Right. Basically, the reason why in most of the commercial orchards they, they cut them off below the knee <coughs> level is because then you've got these big branches coming out. People can pick the fruit. Right. And more and more... Uh, the orchards are changing uh, because most of the farmers can't afford to have people climbing ladders. Right. <sighs> the biggest expense, expense really is workers' compensation, and the biggest, the biggest risk in in um, orchard work and farming is people falling from ladders. Mm -hmm. So most of the orchards now are called pedestrian orchards. You want to be able to pick from a small platform that's on wheels or from the ground. And it makes more sense from a lot of reasons, because once they started doing that, they realized the fruit were bigger. Well, it's closer to the source of the, of the nutrients. All right. All right, so do you, have a, do you have a general idea of what these? Yeah, but like that's blowing my mind. What about trees? Yeah, that's, that's, that's why we're here. What? <laughs> what about trees that are grafted with different varieties so it extends the season? Yeah. And then how is that? Is that done? Uh, I mean, not how it's done, but then your tree is going through several phases at once. Yeah. Is that kind of Multiple weird? grafted trees, uh, they're interesting. I, I think it's much better. Uh, I'll give you an example. One of the, one of the schools in uh, the Waverly School in um, Pasadena, it's right behind Huntington Memorial Hospital. Uh, the garden master there, they have, a, they have a farm, the Waverly Farm, it's about an acre. They wanted to plant a fruit wall, which, which is very interesting because that's the way most orchards are planted now. They're planted in long hedges. Olives are always done that way. Apples are always planted that way. Very few, if any, commercial standard orchards are planted. They're planted low in a, in a column, in a hedge. So um, what you can do, what we did at Waverly, it's almost a block long. We planted a different apple, starting with ones that ripen in May, all the way to ones that ripen in January. 
So each mm. tree is a little differently, uh, a little different. There's a Fuji, and then an Anna that ripened very early, and at the other end there's a white pearman. 